Journey to the Center of the Earth by Jules Verne. Chapter 1 Our story begins on May the 24th, 1863, at a little house in Hamburg, Germany. On that day, Professor Otto Liedenbrock comes home from work early. Look, he says to his nephew, Axel. This wonderful book comes from the old shop near here. And it's got Arne Sacknussum's name in the front. Who's Arne Sacknussum? And what's the book about? asks Axel. I can't read it. <laughs> That's because it's in old Icelandic. Sacknussum's an old Icelandic scientist from the 1500s. And this book's more than 400 years older than him. Just then, they find a dirty old paper in the book. Look, says Professor Liedenbrock. It's a secret message. I'm sure. Professor Liedenbrock and Axel want to understand the message on the paper. They work on it all afternoon. It's no good, says the professor angrily that evening. I can't understand it. And he goes out of the house for a walk. The fire in the room is very warm. Soon, Axel feels hot. He moves the paper in front of his face. Suddenly, Axel can read the message through the paper. It is a secret message from Arne Sacknussum, he thinks. But it's backwards. Now Axel understands the message. He's afraid. Just then, his uncle comes home. Axel is afraid of his uncle, too. Well, Axel, says Liedenbrock, can you understand the message now? Uh, yes, uncle, says Axel. You must read it backwards. <laughs> of course, says Professor Liedenbrock. Good boy. That's it. The professor reads the message. Go down into the crater of Snaefels before the last day of June, when the shadow of Scartaris falls across it, and you can go to the center of the earth. 
Arne Sacknussen. Uncle, Axel asks the professor, where's Sneffels? In Iceland, answers Liedenbrock. It's an old volcano. But, Uncle, nobody can go to the center of the earth and come back alive, says Axel. It's very hot and dark down there, I'm sure. Yes, they can. Arne Sacknussum's message tells us that, says Liedenbrock. But is his message true? We must go to Iceland and see. Now, remember, Axel, this is a secret, says Liedenbrock. We want to be the first scientists of our time to go to the center of the earth. Later, Axel meets his fiancée, Groiben. He tells her about his uncle's secret plan to go to the center of the earth. I don't want to go, he says. I want to stay here with you. Of course you must go, says Groiben. What a wonderful journey. And when you come back, you can marry me. All the next day, Liedenbrock and Axel get different things for the journey. At last, late that evening, everything is ready. At half past five the next morning, the professor and Axel leave for Iceland. Goodbye, Axel, says Groiben. Remember? I'm waiting for you. Be quick, Axel, calls Liedenbrock. Our train leaves Hamburg at six o'clock. We must be on it. Yep. <laughs> Chapter 2 Professor Liedenbrock and Axel take a train to Denmark. They've got a lot of luggage. The next day, they arrive in Copenhagen. There, Liedenbrock finds a ship. They sail across the sea to Iceland. Liedenbrock feels bad because there's a storm at sea. On the 13th of June, they arrive in Reykjavik. When they get off the ship, they can see a mountain. Look over there, Axel, the professor says excitedly. <laughs> That's 
Snaefels. Many people come to see the boat arrive. The professor and Axel meet a science teacher. His name is Mr. Friedrichsen. You can stay at my house, he says. In the evening, the professor and Friedrichsen talk about Iceland. There are lots of interesting things for a scientist to see in Iceland," says Friedrichsen. "Really?" answers the professor. He doesn't want to tell Friedrichsen about his plan. "Yes. Do you know Snæfells?" Asks Friedrichsen. It's a volcano. A volcano. That is interesting, nephew. We must visit this Snæfells mountain. You can go there on foot, but you need a guide. Says Friedrichsen, "I know a very good man. We can meet him tomorrow." The next morning, they meet Hans Bielke. Can you be our guide and take us to Snæfells? Asks the professor. We must arrive there before the thirtieth of this month. Yes, answers Hans. I can. Soon, their luggage is ready. They take a lot of food and water with them. On the sixteenth of June, they leave Reykjavik. Liedenbrock and Axel are on horses. Hans walks in front, and two more horses take the luggage. One week later. They are near Snæfells. It's an old volcano, but old volcanoes sometimes erupt too. Thinks Axel. Snæfells has two tops, says the professor. And we're going to the top of Skartaris. Over there, they leave the horses and begin to go up the mountain. Axel soon feels tired, but the professor is excited, and he stays not far behind Hans. Oh. When they arrive at the top of Skartaris, they are cold, hungry, and very tired. It's midnight, but they can see the light of the sun in the sky. The next morning, Professor Liedenbrock. Speaks quietly to Hans. Axel and I are looking for the center of the Earth. Do you want to come with us? Yes, says Hans, and the three men 
begin to go down into the crater. Chapter 3 When Hans, Liedenbrock and Axel arrive at the bottom of the crater, there are three black holes in front of them. Where do we go now? asks Axel. I don't know. We must wait and see says the professor. It is the 28th of June. Suddenly, the sun comes out, and the shadow of Scartaris falls on one of the holes. It's Arne Saknosem's sign says Professor Liedenbrock excitedly. Come on, we go down that hole to the center of the earth. They go through the hole and climb slowly down. It takes them ten and a half hours to arrive at the bottom. What a very long climb! Now they are 2,000 meters from the top of Snaefells. In the morning, they eat breakfast, and Professor Liedenbrock looks at his compass. Now, he says, the journey begins. They take lamps and go into a big, dark tunnel. They walk for a very long time. Axel and the professor look at the crystals in the walls of the tunnel. What wonderful crystals! Axel says. Yes, says Liedenbrock. Hans walks in front of them. He doesn't say a thing. On the second day, the big tunnel stops suddenly. In front of them, there are two small tunnels. Which tunnel do we take now? asks Axel. The tunnel on the left, says Liedenbrock. They go into the new tunnel. Slowly, they walk down it. But sometimes, the tunnel goes up for a time. Uncle, perhaps this is the wrong tunnel. It's going up, says Axel. But Liedenbrock doesn't listen. And he doesn't stop. After five days of walking, the tunnel stops. We must go back, says Professor Liedenbrock angrily. But Axel is worried. We haven't got any water, he says. They go back to the first big tunnel. Now, they go down the small tunnel on the right. But they can't walk very well,
because they are all very thirsty. That night, Axel is sleeping when he hears a noise. He opens his eyes at once and sees Hans. Their guide is walking away with the lamp. Where's he going? Hmm, maybe he's leaving us, thinks Axel. He closes his eyes again, tiredly. An hour later, Hans comes back. Water, he says quietly to Liedenbrock. Come. Axel, get up, cries the professor. And they quickly follow Hans. After some time, they can hear water through the tunnel wall. Hans makes a hole in it. Water comes out, and at last they all drink. Don't close that hole, Hans, says Liedenbrock. Now, this stream can be our guide. Chapter 4 The next day, Hans, Liedenbrock and Axel follow the stream down the tunnel. The professor looks at his compass. Where are we now? asks Axel. Two hundred kilometers south east of Snaefels. So, we are under the sea, answers his uncle. When the tunnel goes down, Professor Liedenbrock is very happy. Sometimes they stop, and the professor writes in his book. How many days is it before we go back? asks Axel. We've got water now, but not much food. Be quiet, Axel, says Liedenbrock. I'm writing about our journey. Axel is walking down the tunnel the next day, when suddenly he loses Hans and the professor. He walks back, but he can't find them. Just then, he falls and breaks his lamp. Oh, oh no! he cries. Axel sits and waits in the dark. At last, he hears something. He puts his head near the tunnel wall and listens. I can hear Hans and the professor, he thinks. They're talking, but where are they? Help! cries Axel. Help! The tunnel wall takes Axel's cries down to the professor and Hans. Axel! Are you okay? 
The professor calls back. We are far in front of you. Come on down here. Axel begins to walk, but he can't see anything. Suddenly, his foot hits something, and he's falling down. Axel falls for a long time. When he opens his eyes again, he's in a very big cave. Axel, you're alive! cries the professor. Yes, but where are we? asks Axel. I can see light, and I can hear the sea. Are we under the earth now or not? Yes, Axel, we are, says the professor. There's a big underground sea in front of us. We must go across it. Hans is making a raft. Soon, the raft is ready. They put their luggage on it and begin to sail across the underground sea. They sail for many days, but they don't see a thing. Suddenly, two sea monsters come out of the water. They're fighting. I must tell Groiben about these monsters when I get home, thinks Axel. Hans quickly sails the raft away from them. Chapter 5 Hans, Liedenbrock and Axel sail on the raft across the underground sea. The professor is looking for land. Look at those clouds, says Axel. A storm's coming. The raft is sailing very quickly now. There is a lot of lightning in the clouds. Suddenly, some blue and white lightning comes from the clouds. It explodes over them and breaks the raft. Just then, the raft hits some rocks. At last, they are back on land. Oh, how can we go back to Snaefels now? asks Axel. Go back? What are you saying? First, we must find the center of the earth, says the professor. Hans finds the luggage and begins to work on the raft. He wants to make it ready to sail again soon. Liedenbrock and Axel go for a walk. They walk over some rocks. Suddenly, the professor 
finds a dead body. <gasps> it's the body of a man. Oh no, thinks Axel. Are there men living down here? They walk to the trees in front of them. These trees aren't green because there's no sun. Through the trees, Axel can see some big land monsters. What are they? He asks. Oh no! Look at that! They're coming nearer! He cries worriedly. They're mastodons! Laughs the professor. <laughs> they aren't living on Earth now, but they are alive down here. Just then, the professor stops. Look over there, Axel, he says quietly. In front of them, they can see a man. He's very tall, and he's walking with the mastodons. Quick, back to the raft before he sees us, cries Axel. The professor runs after him. Not far from the raft, Axel sees something on the ground. It's an old knife. Is that your knife on the ground? He asks the professor. No, answers Liedenbrock. He takes the knife in his hand. But let's see. Why is it here? Perhaps I know. Liedenbrock looks carefully at the rocks near them. Soon he finds something interesting. Look! Axel, the letters A, S, for Arne Sacknussem, says the professor. It's a sign from his journey here in the 1500s. We must go down this tunnel now. After that... Liedenbrock and Axel go back to the raft. All their luggage is on it, and the raft is ready to sail. Quickly, Hans, says the professor. Let's sail to those rocks over there. When they get to the rocks, they can see the tunnel with the letters A S next to it. Let's go into this tunnel and follow Arne Sacknussem, says Professor Liedenbrock. They take the lamp and go into the new tunnel. Soon they come to a very big rock. It's in the center of the tunnel. Uh, it's no good, says the professor. We can't go through the tunnel. This rock is stopping us. Just then, he remembers the gunpowder. In the luggage. Ah, let's blow up the rock, he says. Then we can follow Sacknussem. Chapter 
Chapter Six. Hans goes back to the raft, and brings the gunpowder. He puts lots of it near the rock. He takes the lamp, and lights the gunpowder. Then, Liedenbrock, Hans, and Axel. Get on the raft quickly, and sail away from the tunnel. Three, two, one. A few minutes later, the rock explodes. <laughs> Suddenly, the sea water runs through a big hole. In the cave wall, and the raft goes with it. Down, down, down. The raft goes down with Liedenbrock, Hans, and Axel on it. Minutes later, the raft. Is moving very fast through a big tunnel. Liedenbrock lights the lamp, and Axel can now see the luggage. We haven't got much food there, he thinks. Then, the raft goes over a waterfall. When they arrive at the bottom, water from the waterfall falls on top of them. Everything is dark and very quiet there. Am I dead? Thinks Axel. Hans. Lights the lamp again. They are in a small tunnel. They can see. Look, we're going up now, says Liedenbrock excitedly. Up, asks Axel. Where's this tunnel going? Can we get out of it alive? I don't know, Axel, but let's eat," says the professor. "I'm hungry." They eat, but soon there is no more food. It's hotter and hotter in the tunnel now, and the raft is going up the hot tunnel. Very quickly, Axel looks at the water under the raft, but there isn't any water now. The raft is moving on lava. Axel is worried. What's happening? He asks. We're going back. To the upper world, says the professor. We are in a volcano, and it's erupting. But where is this volcano? Thinks Axel. Suddenly, the raft comes up out of the tunnel and into the sky. It is moving very fast now. A few minutes later, it comes back down and hits the ground near a mountain. Oh, are we back in Iceland? 
asks Axel. No, this isn't Iceland, says the professor. Everything's green here. Come on, says the professor. This lava's very hot. Let's walk away from the mountain. Liedenbrock, Axel and Hans get off the raft and begin to walk quickly away from the volcano. Soon, they see a small boy under a tree. What's the name of this volcano? Liedenbrock asks the boy in a number of different languages. Finally, the boy understands when the professor speaks in Italian. Etna, he answers. So, we're on Etna in Sicily, in the south of Italy, says the professor. That's 5,000 kilometers from Snaefels. Hans smiles for the first time on their long journey. After that, they take a boat back to Germany. When they arrive at the professor's house in Hamburg, Gräuben is waiting. Now you're a hero, Axel. She says, Please, don't leave me again. Soon, Hans says goodbye and goes back to Iceland. Professor Liedenbrock writes a book about his journey to the center of the earth. After that, he's a hero for scientists across the world. And Axel is the happiest man on earth when he marries Groiben. Thank <laughs> you.